All right, welcome to Kitchen Ambush this week. We're at a new location with a new local chef and a new local product. And the best thing about it, we're in a live running kitchen for lunch service right now. So you may see some things you haven't normally seen on the show, which is only going to make it better and make it more fun. So we wanted to go to a new restaurant and have something we haven't had yet, which was some killer barbecue. So we had to come to Froggy's out in Ocean Park in the Virginia Beach area. So I'll introduce you to Chef Chris. How you doing? And we're going to talk a little bit about the restaurant, what you guys are doing here, any activities and you know big things you have coming up. But most of all, what is Froggy's? What kind of style of food is it? Well, Froggy's is uh, straight, classic barbecue in a lot of senses. Being in Virginia Beach, we do not really aspire to Texas style or North Carolina style. We kind of do our own thing. We make all our own rubs, all our own sauces, uh, and everything is scratch made, which you know is typical for barbecue. Uh, but it's our take on, on what I, as the chef, feel I want to produce uh, as far as ribs or brisket or whole chickens. Uh, and, and what I really like is, and we talked a little bit beforehand, is that it really is your take, your feel, your menu. So yes, you're doing barbecue. Yes, you're not trying to be you know, someone else's barbecue. You're literally kind of making your own vibe and feel to it. Yes, uh, you know, for instance, our rub for our brisket involves coffee. Um, that is not typical. Uh, that is exciting, though. You know, and so you're using a dark roast, a light roast. It's a it's a dark roast, um, cool. and it has other uh, things in it like smoked paprika, cumin, et cetera, et cetera. We'll so you divulge take some all of the, the uh, information. Oh, of course not. You know, trade <laughs> secrets here. So you you indulge some of the, the the tradition with your flair. So you're getting that molding of what really food is about now and this generation's food is all about taking tradition and mixing it with your own taste yes. and flair. and you know you're going to have the customers that are so used to texas north carolina <laughs> style to get a little testy but i think we win most of them over testy over barbecue i can't imagine that ever <laughs> as happens. long as it's good who cares it, right, right as long as it's good now tell me some of your your key items on your menu because it's not just you come in here it's not just your Barbecue, baked beans, corn on the cob plate. So give me some of that. What's your key item then, are? Well, we do some different things. Like, uh, you know, we make a uh, sweet potato hash that has crab, uh, red onion, and bacon in it. Um, we do collards at this time of year. Uh, we do a uh, heirloom cherry tomato uh, salad with a little apple cider vinegar. Uh, nice. You know, and then, of course, you have to have your classics such as mac and cheese and, right. and whatnot. Um, but... You know, a little bit different. I, I doubt you're going to see sweet potato hash on many menus. No, and I got to tell you, just before we went live, there was some of that. Uh, that was that sweet potato hash that was in the pan earlier, right? Yes. It is beautiful. It had that sheen to it. You know, the sweet potatoes are cut really small so that they cook better. Yes. They're going to be tender, and then to mix that with sweet crab meat. Well, and we even par roast them, so that nice. we got a roast on them, and then it's a, a quicker saute that way. So you're going to bring out some of that caramelization that yep. balances with crab meat beautifully. Yes, and bacon. And Okay, again, we know how I feel about bacon, and that is just a great pairing. Sweet potatoes and bacon already are just, they just <laughs> naturally fit together. So, you know, tell me a little bit about you. Where, you know, what, how was your culinary brought up? Where are you from? That kind of thing. Well, I cut my teeth on many a higher end, many fine dining restaurants in Richmond, uh, from the Hard Shell, Europa, Helen's. Uh, but I also traveled around the United States a lot. I've worked in Philadelphia, Atlanta. Denver ski resorts, spent eight years in Seattle. Nice. So I have, I'm, through that, I've always worked for guys who are like, if you want to move around, just spend a year with me, move on, learn something else. Uh, and I chose that route versus the culinary school route. Yes. So. And that's, you know, that's kind of the thing that a lot of people don't necessarily get or understand about our profession is that it is very much a life learning uh, profession yes. where you're going to spend some time in one place and then you're going to go to another and each step along the way that's how you really kind of build your culinary yes. kind of direction and, and mentorship in our in our industry is crucial yes i have chefs that have literally changed my life over the course of my career and i think that's important what's one of the toughest things with what we do working in restaurants and in kitchens, what was one of the toughest things for you to kind of grasp and wrap your head around? 
as far as just anything in the restaurant industry as far as cooking or as far as you know taking on more more responsibilities to running front of the house and back of the house i think and i some i have some problems with the current generation i i think you don't realize how many hours you have to work and how hard you have to work and how quickly you are expected to do three or four things at a time right every other job in the world you don't do three things at once one of which you could burn and have to restart it's like when people come in and they order food you could have a packed house of a restaurant you know 50 different people sending tickets through and you know this is about your typical amount of of cooking area so to put out 50 or so plates all at the same time that's a challenge most people will never get yeah we we call it uh, learning how to get out of second gear (laughs) it's like finding seven more gears after that one and then the the ever-present music of the ticket printer Yes, which you will wake up in the middle of the night too. Everyone eventually. will tell you that. I think we got a couple you want to talk about before that waking up to the ticket printer. Yes. You know, that is a sound that you never get out of your head. Uh, what's some of the, you know, have you had people with a new menu and kind of the changeover here at Froggy's? What's some of the things they've really dove into and love and you're seeing ordered again and again and again? Well, uh, simple things like we have a little micro trio plate where you get three ribs, get a little bit of brisket, and some pulled pork. Um, we set That's that right. up as more of an appetizer, uh, and that just flies out of here. So uh, it's like a barbecue charcuterie. Yeah, we have a big platter, and then we have the micro trio. So you know, you got we have bands five nights a week. It gives there's plenty of menu food for people to just munch on. Uh, you know, we have a Korean barbecue brisket taco. Uh, okay, you, you got all my language right there. Yeah. So you know, but uh, barbecue sells itself. Yep. Um, you know, I I can almost not keep up with the amount of pork that I have to smoke already. And, you know, the menu's been out since July 5th. And that's phenomenal. Now, one of the things I thought was really interesting is Mondays are that night that normally most restaurants are either closed or it's their slow night. You guys are banging on Mondays. Yes, we have bluegrass on Monday, uh, which, again, you know, that's why we went to barbecue, because of the styles of bands. Tonight is Wednesday. We have blues night. Monday is uh, is bluegrass night, and it, it goes crazy. Now, our crowd is 40 and older for the most part. Mm-hmm. We are not we are not a, a bar for young people. It's just not their scene. Um, but we do have bands, uh, some of which are cover bands, some of which are all original. Uh, it just runs the gamut, and, and people settle in. Uh, and, you know, this food fits that experience of just yes. enjoying the band. And I think that's what's interesting, because a lot of people talk about food pairings, you know, f- pairing food with a beer, or pairing food with a wine. You're actually pairing music to food yes. to where, you, I mean, it's really a melody. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 we're a barbecue joint, and I take no bad feelings about calling our, our place a joint. There's a good thing about it having a, a joint. it has a classic connotation right. of yeah. being fun and good. And, you know, another term I've heard is roadhouse. You know, and all that's coming from the fact that we're doing barbecue. Yeah. And you're doing it right. The atmosphere is good. It's a fun place to sit and relax. It's very welcoming. The layout's great. Nobody has to feel real cramped. And yeah. your bar looks great. So, I mean, it's a, it's a good place to see music, have meetings, talk with people. But most of all, have some amazing barbecue with Chef Chris's flair. Yeah. All right, cool. So, now to the fun part. We, we are here. You guys know what we do here. We do an ambush where it's one local product, one local chef, one amazing dish. And so this week's product is a little different than what you're normally used to seeing because we, we wanted to go outside the box for you. We, we hold you in such high esteem and you're such a barbecue guru. I thought totally you could work with this. So the mystery box, Uh-oh. the kitchen ambush box, toolbox, if you will. And so we're going to open the box. I'm going to show them at home first. What we have in here uh, smells good. It smells like it should perfectly go with barbecue. So now I'm going to turn it around. From the Bakehouse at Chelsea, a local bakery, we have a cinnamon peach turnover. So, like I said, different than what we've had. We've had peanut butters and butters and sauces and jams. I had to bring you something fun. So I, I like peaches. <laughs> see, we got a good start. We're off to a rocket start. We like peaches. And peaches really pair beautifully with barbecue. In many ways, yes. Um, you could even do a, a glaze for ribs that would just knock your socks off. I love that you sound so positive. Here's your box. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so All right. 
you know, you've got peaches in there, or great pastry, cinnamon and sugar. My favorite thing is, again, another from a tremendous local bakery that is literally one of those places. They have a fire oven. They're up there early, early I in the agree. morning. I've been there. That place is phenomenal. Perfect. I agree. I, I, I think they're doing a fantastic job down there. And so now I'm going to bring a little of that to you, and now you do your thing. So what okay. are you thinking? Uh, we're going to make a brisket dish, probably using the hash as well. Oh, so and happy we're gonna, right now. We're going to break down the peaches, and, um, you know, with the lack of a better word, it'll be like a, a salsa or sauce of sorts. You know, so we've got our savoriness and our coffee, rub, brisket, and we're going to add a little sweetness to it. So I'm going to get peaches, sweet potato, bacon, brisket, crab meat. Crab meat, my, my life's real hard. <laughs> Let me just tell you how hard my life's. All right, go ahead and get started. All right. Let's now, see this go I together. I have to run, go get a All brisket. Right. So again, using a local product from a place like the Big House at Chelsea is definitely a way we're going to shake up Kitchen Ambush. So we're not just going to look for those things you can buy on a store shelf, but we're also going to feature those things that are being made right there for you, ready for pickup. So today it's a turnover. There it is. There's the sounds of my people, the ticket printer. Uh, and if you haven't spent eight hours, 12 hours consistently listening to that, you will today. So, you know, that way you get an opportunity to see the kind of actual products that are being made that are carry out ready to eat, too. So I just got to see a killer brisket walk by me, one that has a beautiful bark on it, great color, and I, I, I would have no problems putting that in the ambush box and just walking out. I probably shouldn't do that, though, but the thought <laughs> is definitely there. All right, so, and what's great, you're also going to get to see them doing their live service while they're doing this ambush. So he's got kind of a double challenge going on. Oh, look at that brisket, man. So, I and of that, course, the brisket gets cut two different ways because of the way the, the actual uh, meat muscle runs. Absolutely. And, and that see. makes a difference because if you cut it wrong, it's not going to get that same texture and mouthfeel and just anything. No, in fact, it'll be chewy like, uh, like you know, on St. Patty's Day when somebody cuts the corned beef incorrectly. Yeah, that's not a, never a good thing. All right. And so what I love about it, when you look at that strip, it's got that beautiful variation in color. It yes. looks like bacon. And you can see we've managed to achieve our smoke ring that we're yes. after, which is very important. So how long do you smoke it for? Our brisket is usually smoked for about eight hours. I know everyone likes to speak of the 12 and 14 hour brisket smokes. Right. Uh, commercially, that's not very viable for us. We'll smoke it to about 170 degrees and then we'll wrap it and we'll let it finish and come up to about 220. So you're letting that internal cooking process just continue wrapped yes. inside. And then that way it doesn't dry out on the bottom. Right. And, uh, you know, by science, a piece of meat like this, the muscle fibers don't break down until after 210 or so. Right. you got to get it up there so that it, it breaks down. Mm -hmm. And in a perfect world, when we get our alto sham, <laughs> this will be cut to order. So That's going to be amazing yes. to see that kind of come out and go it's that gonna way. It's going to be awesome. So we'll get this out of the way. Yeah, you can just go ahead and wrap that up. I'll uh, make sure I get that <laughs> perfectly stashed away for you. Yeah, you got two more plates. All right, so he's going to do two plates. That way we have our pretty picture plate for our amazing food photographer. And then we're going to have our plate that we get to eat. And what they don't know is I'm going to eat both plates <laughs> because I really want to do full service to the people at home. Okay, so brought those beans out, and then I'll take over the... Uh, oh, you're... So now you kind of get an idea of what it's like inside a kitchen. Multiple orders coming in, multiple plates being made. It's, it's a lot of people refer to it as the dance in the kitchen right. to understand Just do that spacing uh, that happens as you're moving back and forth and front and behind, and you're dealing with hot, you're dealing with sharp, you're dealing with plated food. It's not easy. It's definitely not easy, and I think. I mean, you could speak to this too. I think that's one of the toughest things that I've seen new people coming into the industry deal with is understanding how to do that dance in the kitchen. Yes, it's it's well, it's you know, it's part of the job and and the thing is, you know, and you can always tell when a kitchen a kitchen set up a little funny because you're running around each other and you're crossing right. over each other and you know, that that can't happen. That gets old. 
All right, so now you've opened up the turnovers. Yes, so we're going to And you're going to scoop all the peach out. Yes, we are. And that's already been cooked down, and it's got probably looks like brown sugar in it, cinnamon in it, butter, to give you that really great, sweet, natural peach flavor on the inside that's been baked. And then what are you thinking about doing with the, the actual turnover dough as well? I'm not quite sure. We might uh, see if we can get a little of this cinnamon crisp off of it, which we'll just sprinkle over. We definitely want to heat the peaches up, but we don't want to we don't want to render them any further right. because they've obviously done a beautiful job with that. So you're going to go ahead and keep that natural caramelization they've already done and just utilize it. Yeah, just get it hot. Right. No, please do. Please cook as much pork next to me as humanly possible because I want to smell it the entire time I'm here. It just makes me happy. I mean, pulled pork on a flat top with that little vinegar. Yeah, that's delicious. Now you're getting that caramelization on the pork. I mean, that's what makes for a good sandwich. Yeah, I'm having a rough day today, let me tell you. All right, so in the pan here, we've got a little bacon and onion. A little bacon and onion. We're just gonna, we're gonna give that a second to kind of warm up and get some little, that little grease in there. Let the onion uh, cook down a touch. Nice. And we're gonna add our sweet potato hash and then our crab meat. Uh, and we're gonna finish with butter. Fact, Told you you'll get used to hearing that ticket runner. I'm gonna make two of yeah, these. Yeah, so you've got, you know, bacon's got its own sweetness, sweetness to it. Sweet potato does, crab meat does, you've exactly. got peaches, so it's gonna be, you know you're gonna have those sweet elements of the dish, but then you're gonna get that smoky element from the brisket. Yes, as well as that little bit of coffee hit that uh, you know is in the raw. Which is gonna be a great way to balance those flavors out. I hope so. So how do you like being the, the first to, to get a very uh, not necessarily traditional ambush ingredient? Well, you know, like you say, compared to taste again, it's all relative, right? <laughs> Still. Uh, yep. Chef Chris was one of our chefs at Taste Again, which was another food event that we did, where we challenged three chefs to go head to head in a competition that included cooking with only ingredients made from a elementary school cafeteria. Let's just say that was a little challenging. So now what we've got over here is plates going out to the customers and service. So you got the full pork, the mac and cheese that was thrown in the oven, beautiful, just vibrant <coughs> green beans that you can really smell that garlic on. Will you, will you run that pan through the, just spray it off and bring it back to me? All right, so hash the, the sweet potatoes hit the pan. Yes. And you're going to let that cook through with all the, the fat from the bacon, the sweetness from the onions. Yep. Then we're going to add our crab meat once she's rolling because we don't want to overcook the crab meat. Right. Yep, you got it. Definitely doesn't take long on a crab meat. No. It's really just warming it through. You're not really necessarily cooking it. And with everything, and we have salt, pepper, butter. We're gonna bacon add butter. and butter. And I love the way you guys plate, by the way. The, the silver round tins that have the, the green checkered paper in it. Yeah, you know, again, it's we're not trying to put on airs. We just want to put out quality food that's fun. And uh, and that's just classic barbecue style in a lot of ways. Absolutely. You know, we, we, we could have gone with uh, uh, cafeteria trays as well. Yep. And that's part of the giving it, you know, having that feel and, and being part of the that just re of what barbecue really was. You're not trying to over poo poo it up and, and be too clever with it. You're sticking to its roots and you're giving people just food that matches what exactly. you are. Exactly, exactly. The smoking process doesn't change. Right. It's about what you rub it with. It's about what you do with it. All right, I'm just gonna let that rest. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I got I got pulled pork on this side that was cooking up for me. Now I get to smell sweet potato and crab. Work. It's like the best cologne you can have. All right. Um. All right, so tickets continue to come in. This is uh, this is kind of what it's like inside a kitchen. You're going to have multiple things happening at the same time, a lot of movement, a lot of just different things for different plates. So it takes a lot of organization. That's all. Let's go. And you guys changed over the menu when? Uh, the menu came out July 5th. So we're not even six months into the new menu. Oh, God, no. Yes, definitely not. But it's really kind of hit its stride and people understanding what you are, 
you know, what kind of food you're going to do. You said you had those few people at the beginning that, you know, might have really wanted the menu to stay the way it was, but... And that's natural. Right. And the, the weird thing about barbecue is it's so personal to people that if they've, if they've been to, to the places in Austin, Texas or whatnot, you know, that's they always want to compare it. Compare right. it to this, compare it to that. But... That's why we, we stand true to what we do. This is how we do it. This is what we want to do. And this is a, you know, this is a family restaurant. Yes, uh, very much so. Owned by two, pe uh, two people, a married couple. So owned by families, families come. I mean, it, it really is a great place to bring anybody to. Yes, uh, family friendly. Uh, you know, the music is not punk rock or hardcore, it's it's classic, you know, like I said, bluegrass, blues, you know. Nice. Alright, so in this pan, you're just kind of bringing, the, warming the peaches back up. Yeah, and I'm going to put a little bit of this cinnamon crust in here and see what happens. Just Only maybe good to give stuff. it a little body. Absolutely. Add some cinnamon crispies, I'm all down for that. Yeah, they really did a beautiful job with these turnovers. I it think is. the it's fact that I have nice. to destroy them. <laughs> That's all right. They get destroyed when we eat them anyways. But, to be, you know, now we're going to do this justice by adding some really good savory avenues. All right, so what are you doing? You got first thing going there. The rest of the hash. Okay. Okay. So how busy do you guys see your lunch crowd? This is actually busy. Yeah, Wednesdays are our slow lunch day, and, of course, you guys are here, so this is what happens. Yeah, of course. We have to bring the crowd to make it a little more challenging. We can't make it that easy on you. You know, you know, extra crazy ingredient. We go ahead and you know make sure that people show up to, to eat lunch. We got to make it as, as challenging as possible. <laughs> We're equal equal opportunity like that. Man, that looks delicious. And what's even great about the the way you went with this is. You know, the way a plate looks, the way food comes together, the colors, that really is a crucial piece because we eat with our eyes first. Yes. And these colors blend beautifully together. Very fall, earthy colors. But it can also, you got to be careful because barbecue is a lot of browns. And, yep. You know, so again, that's why we have our summer salad and, and some things to brighten up as sides. Yes, absolutely. I'm anxious to see how these two plates are going to come out. You know, how they're going to look, how they're going to dress up. But more so, I'm just happy I had to eat it. All right. Make sure our brisket's nice and supple again. All we've done is uh, a little bit of chicken stock, so we're not imparting more flavor. Um, it's, chicken stock's pretty neutral. Right. So it, until we get our nice, beautiful piece of equipment, we have to bring things back slowly. Uh, so they're nice and hot. So you're not continuing to cook them and change the complex. We don't want to complex, continue right. to cook them. And this is, again, one of those things that I wish you could smell all the smells I've got. I mean, everything from onions to sweet potato to crab to brisket to the peaches to, to bacon. It's just a really good day. All right, so first thing going down is that crab and sweet potato hash with the bacon and onions in it. So you talked about earlier, you know, building with height, so you're starting with the hash as the base. Yeah, and then we're just going to lay our brisket over it. Yeah, that's looking nice. Scratch and sniff. We're working on that technology next. It'll be on your app. Hey, you know what? If you're watching from your phone right now, scratch the lens on your phone and just give it a quick smell. Trust me. Why would I tell you to do that other than, you know, it's true. All right, so a lot of brisket going down. No uh, no skimping on the portions here. No, but uh, like we discussed earlier, everything on this menu has been costed out. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we understand the basics of Restaurant 101. Yeah, I know the owner found that hilarious. I thought he'd like that. We were having a lot of fun talking before we got started about the restaurant industry and running restaurants and things like that. It's always good to sit around and talk with people that understand the day-to-day -day of that. All right. Now you so the brisket's down, resting on top of the hash, and now we're going into that that peach, crunchy, cinnamon Damn. crispiness. That's good stuff. And that's going to be that beautiful kind of almost a 
uh, chutney of sorts. Yeah, to yeah the top. in some respects, that's what we're looking at. Um, I didn't need to add any sugars or anything to no, this. It's it there. is amazing. Brisket in the early afternoon. It's like high tea, but so much cooler. We're just gonna let that cascade down the brisket. I love that, you love that big technical term, cascade. We got a barbecue joint that cascades. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so now you're gonna hit it with a little bit of Yeah, we're just gonna garnish tomatoes. with a little bit. This is a, this Give is some summer, nice acidity. summer salad that, you know, it's apple cider vinegar and basil and red onion. So just a little accoutrement there. You got it? Mm -hmm. See, that's that dance. It's, it's real. If you could see at home, there's like feet marks with a dotted line so you know the dance. Oh, God, that's beautiful. So okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take one of these aside and give it to our miraculous food photographer. And then we're going to come over here and just, just take a gander at that. How could you not be really happy to see that plate come and sit in front of you right now. <laughs> so, and what I think it's really cool is what people don't realize, a lot of this started as a, as a peach turnover and is now turned into a fully composed barbecue dish. Yes, which will have quite a few flavors running through your mouth in that one. So let's make that happen. Let's grab some forks and eat some food. <laughs> it's fantastic. I like it. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> I want some of this cascading goodness. <laughs> All right, let's try this together. You got some forks? No, let me. I mean, I, I would totally just. But I'll wait for a fork. So now you got to kind of see not only a dish being made, but they were doing this with the challenge of live service. And he had a few tickets came through. Uh, he was, you know, he had two chefs in the kitchen working. It was great. All right, look at that. Got my fancy rolled up silverware. Man, I'm stoked for this. I can't tell you enough. Thank you there, sir. Yes, but in keeping with the barbecue uh, theme, it's rolled in a paper towel. Right? <laughs> That's legit. No fancy napkin here. It's a paper towel because you're going to need it when we do this. All right, let's dig into this. You got to try this with me. You know, this, this might end up being be nice one of those. Soft. Oh, look at that. Just pulls apart. I need some of that sweet potato. I need some of this peach crispy goodness. Oh, man. Oh, uh, here we go. I'll tell you what. I'm smelling a, a menu addition to this one. I'll tell you what. That was oh, going my God. That is so good. Yep, that's it for the show. Go away. I have to have some privacy while I enjoy this dish. <laughs> Well, I continue to eat because I am so not ready to let this go because, cheers, successful ambush for sure. That is ambush certified food right there. Tell me about some of the, something you got coming up. Don't you guys have an event coming up? Um, I saw something about, uh, I first saw it, it says Oktoberfest, but it's not. It's Frogtoberfest. Yes, that would be this Sunday is our six year anniversary as a restaurant. We will be doing a whole pig. It's $10 all you can eat with fixings. Wait a minute. $10 all you can eat pig and fixings? Yeah, when the pig's gone, the pig's gone. But it'll be a big one, and it'll be... That means come here early. We get that pig, uh, I, I consider North Carolina local, but the pig does come from a specific farm uh, in North Carolina. Right, you're still getting it from a, a good farm, yep. local farm? Uh, oh, and it's, it's just a party. We're going to have a couple bands throughout the day. Uh, and it's our anniversary, so. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it should be a blast. <laughs> Again, music and barbecue. I literally have to stop. That is so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is mine, though. It's very simple. simple. Simple is good. Simple is good. Straightforward flavors. It is not, you know, when you first look at it, you're going to think oversweet. Because yes. of the, the crab and the sweet potato and, and the beef, but it's not. It's so balanced. See, the bacon helped that. Oh, bacon helps <laughs> everything. But then the brisket is tender. It just pulls right apart. The mouthfeel is tremendous. The smoke ring is beautiful on it. 
Man, banging job. Thank you. I appreciate it. If you haven't been to Froggy's yet, you know, this is one of those local places, the local joints. Awesome. You need to come through where they're doing the legit food, barbecue their own way, but still you get all of those great smoky flavors that you should have in barbecue with some nice flair changes like a sweet potato hash with crab. Yeah, and, and it's, you know, little things too. Like I don't do a St. Louis cut. I do baby backs. Mm -hmm. That, again, is a... They can be a little toothy at times. It's it's different than a, a flat rib. Right. So, again, those are choices as a restaurant we've decided to make. And, and I think they're smart. I think you've made things that keep everything within your wheelhouse. Yes. Which is where a mistake a lot of restaurants make is they try to reach too much for that, you know, uber, you know, fancy, fancy kind of thing instead of just really letting the flavors do what they do. Yeah, I mean, I, and I tell you, I, I've worked a lot of fine dining. Um, you know, I worked for Rodney even here in town at Terrapin, and I a great experience. Uh, fine dining taught me how uncomplicated food can be sometimes, right. Right. and it is about flavors. Uh, Willie Motes was another mentor of mine who taught me great things about how your mouth eats, how your how you taste things and you can't just put sugar on everything you know right. so uh i i think through having a, a decent education about food um, it allows you to make dishes that are complex yet simple right and so it's you know and that's to me one of those other things about local people don't think about is you know that mentorship program that way a lot of us you know learn through the kitchen and that is ultimately a local helping a local Yes. You know, the, the teaching, the imparting of knowledge, the training. So I got to tell you, phenomenal coming out here today. I love the fact that service was happening behind us because, one, I miss it. It's been a while since I've been able to be a part of a live service. <laughs> so to see that happening, see this guy well, over it, here it is props, working hard. Props to JJ because he's this just JJ. motoring around us. You're killing it, man. <laughs> Putting out great food, allowing this guy to do a killer ambush. That's been Killer Ambush. Killer Ambush. That's the new name, Killer Ambush. <laughs> I, I can't get the food out of my head right now. It's there calling to me. We're going well, eat. Well, this has been Kitchen Ambush. We New local restaurant, Froggy's. Great new chef and Chef Chris. Great local product. Again, the, the peach cinnamon turnover from Bakehouse at Chelsea. And I got to tell you, I cannot wait to get off screen and go eat the rest of this food. <laughs> but remember... Look us all up on Facebook, all your, your Instagram and your YouTube. We're at Kitchen Ambush on all of them, especially making sure you go to YouTube and subscribe so you can see past episodes and newest episodes. But then go like these guys on all their social media as well, because if you miss out on this weekend coming to that $10 pick picking, you're crazy. You got it? But otherwise, next week we'll be at another local restaurant with another local chef. And who knows? I've kind of opened the uh, the Pandora's box of ingredients, so who knows what I'll bring next time. <laughs> We're going to go out. eat. You guys enjoy. <laughs> See you next time. That's killer.